you understand. Hey everybody, I'm Tony Jones, and welcome to the Tony Jones Show. Uh, it's not enough. People are willing to take the risk. It's just sort of a, uh, a herd mentality, a lemming-like mentality. If you don't go with the flow, you're anti-American and therefore a suspect. The Tony Jones Show, featuring punk, rockabilly, psychobilly, and Providence, Rhode Island's finest, starts right now. He's a dangerous militia member, I hear. Oh, and there she blows. <laughs> For mediocrity and broadcasting is over. My name is Tony Jones, and you are tuned in to the Tony Jones Show online at TonyJones.org. On Facebook, it's Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show, and on the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in RI. Of course, throughout the live broadcast, if you're catching us live, and even if you're not, I monitor the social media 
sites, the social media outlets during the live broadcast. And I'd love to hear from you if you have any requests, anything you'd like to hear, anything you'd like to talk about. It's Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show and on Twitter at Tony Jones in RI. Of course, I humbly ask you to check out RI Free Radio. Dot org for all of your alternative media needs. And yes, something I used to say quite regularly on the Tony Jones Show is with me is my co-host, Mr. George Gauner. Now, you haven't heard me say that in a while, but if you can believe it, George Gauner here in studio with me. George, good evening. Good evening. I have returned. Of course, George Gauner of the ver- very popular Haunted Cabaret on Rhode Island Free Radio And the Haunted Cabaret kind of, well, there's two points here I'd like to make. The Haunted Cabaret has kind of gone off in a different direction than your regular horror-esque type talk show, right? Now you have Chuckles in the mix, you have Nurse Misery in the mix, and uh, it's gotten quite interesting over at the Haunted Cabaret, to say the least. Yeah, I don't think it's gone away from the basic fundamental mission of the Cabaret, though. (laughs) I mean, we are still... Mission. (laughs) <laughs> we are still a haunted program. It's just that, I don't know, I guess at some point I know that there's a lot of programs across this great country and world and Internet that discuss things like, you know, serial killer movies. <laughs> and, you know, the, in other, what I want to do is when we say the home of all things horror, horror is a lot more than just, you know, Jason and uh, Michael Myers and uh, Godzilla. I mean, it's. You know, there's a whole range of experience that can be scary. Right, and, and, and now that, you know, we are all huge fans of those type things. However, in recent times, the quote-unquote real world has been much more horrifying than the horror genre, if you will. Well, that's it. I mean, some, you know, hardcore horror fans have complained to me, and luckily it's only a few. I'm, I'm glad that <laughs> I'm entertaining more than, you know, I'm turning off. But, you know, they've complained, okay, you know, what's all this with the terrorists? And, you know, I like to talk about ISIS. And, um, but like you just said, real life has caught up to artificial horrors. I mean, no. you can't, you can't, I, I mean, ISIS, if you look at ISIS, if you look at these terrorists, if you look at some of these, you know, earthquakes, if you look at some of these uh, weird foreign governments, this is stuff right out of, never mind horror movies, this is stuff right out of the old 30s pulp horror, weird tales. I mean, look at these ISIS guys. I mean, come on. You know, now, these, are, these are Fu Manchu in the flesh. <laughs> Very, it's, it's difficult to make me cringe. Very difficult to make me cringe. However, I think I've accomplished it a few just, times. Just for anybody that doesn't know, I am the head of, if you want to call it that. I'm the, the, these guys do all the work, but I am the, the conduit that puts Rhode Island Free Radio together, so I produce the other shows. And I was producing The Haunted Cabaret a few months back, um, and you know, you had mentioned ISIS, and you had kind of called out terrorists, and then you gave our location of the studio, our street address, well, well, actually, on the air. <laughs> well, actually, Tony, if you recall, I have never directly disparaged. How, how's that for a political season word (laughs) i have never actually disparaged any terrorist group all i do on my show is i point out the entity in other words to me everything whether you want to call it mainstream news whether you want to call it you know the made up stuff you know the uh reality tv reality radio shows or the six o'clock news we are at the point now where every broadcast on mass media right is entertainment and it has to be because and, it, you know, specific, I mean, I don't want to get too much into a diatribe about alternative media, which everybody knows is something that I completely, utterly am behind. And the fact that it needs to be deregulated, we can not let the FCC get their hands on the Internet airwaves. We need to make it easier for nonprofits like us to do traditional broadcasting. But kind of one of the things that we talked about, and I think this past uh, week when we did the Haunted Cabaret and Chuckles Crypt was was a perfect example of the fact that because of our schedules, myself, you, and Chuckles the Clown were just completely exhausted. I mean, we looked like zombies in here, and yet we still we still decided to make it down to do the shows to put the content out there. Um, but you know, back to my original point, everything has become entertainment because that's what pays the bills, and these guys have 
They need to sell the big name advertisers. Right. And because it's all entertainment, there is no real new. If you want to put, I guess you'd have to put the old cliche quotation marks around the word real. There is no real dependable hardcore news source right. out there. So if listeners to the Haunted Cabaret, I guess I've approached it lately as some sort of existentially horrible situation. Most of the Haunted Cabaret, when I go on, you know, the juxtaposition, there's another big political word <laughs> for you in this season. Uh, the juxtaposition of real world horrors like, you know, the terrorist groups with, you know, Godzilla and superhero movies. <laughs> that's my, the word is satire. That's my point. Right. In other words, I'm doing consciously and blatantly, and I am telling my listeners as I do it, you know, that I am taking no moral scruples about mixing the silly with the serious, which is exactly what mainstream media does with a straight face, which is what our politicians do with a straight face, which is what that hideous-looking Hillary Clinton does with a hideously straight face. Oh, mama. Yeah. I mean, before we went on the air, I pointed out, talk about the haunted cabaret being the home of all things horror. The White House is going to be the <laughs> home of all things horror if that hideous-looking bitch. Think about looking at America, American people. Listen, think for a second. Let your brains unfog. Don't let this happen. <laughs> Don't let that... H.P. Lovecraft Revenant, that Edgar Allan Poe interred behind the wall creature. Do you really want to look at something that looks like Hillary? Never mind her politics. For do you eight, really eight, want? Probably, most likely eight yeah, years. Like you, yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony pointed out if she's elected for four years, she's going to be elected for eight. Do you really want to look at that decomposing face of Hillary Clinton? Do you want to look at those cankles? <laughs> you know, Tony, you complimented me by saying that. I can give you the creeps every so often. <laughs> you have just caused the most revolting image to come before my eyes. I don't know if I can continue. <laughs> you, you think, oh, by the way, this is DJ Seiko, Eddie, before I stop mine. <clears throat> as revolting as it is to you, there are some people. Oh, mama. That are actually into the cankles. Oh, oh Even oh. Hillary Clinton cankles? Even Hillary Clinton cankles. There are some people that are just into that. The, the older, you know, when they pass the cougar stage, they're more in the panther stage. <laughs> I call that the Keith Richards stage. <laughs> some people are into that. I would call that the uh, Museum of Natural History fossilized giant sloth stage. <laughs> That's what I would call Whatever something that looks like it, that. The, that whole lack of a shape to the leg that, that some people find, you know, I, I like to call it elephantitis of the ankles. <laughs> Because it just looks like an elephant, oh, paw, foot. What, what, what would elephants have? Feet, feet? Feet, I guess. All right, well, I don't know. Paw, paw, <laughs> feet. It looks like an elephant foot with a shoe wrapped around it. Oh, yeah. You know, there, there's something to be said for that. You know, you could visit your, your local Home Depot or whatever, and you're going to find someone over there with that same... Elephant foot ashtray look. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. I mean, this thing is so malshapen that you have to split the back of the sneaker just to get that first person. <laughs> and I'm using quotations here if you're not seeing the air quotes. No. <laughs> you're going to have to do something to, to function a shoe around this hoof of a, of a meat paw foot. And Hillary Clinton, I think, is, is cinching that uh, genre of uh, foot fetishism. Now, yeah. just think, a few generations ago... And some of the older guys that I'm friendly with, they were happy just to see an ankle. Now, with alternative media and media in general and high-speed internet, we get to see full-blown nudity anytime we'd like to. <laughs> yeah, I mean... And God bless the internet. <laughs> yes, God bless the internet, but it, you know, there are some terrifyingly dark corners of the internet. Uh, <laughs> but, and and you know, any corner inhabited well, by Hillary Clinton, that's one of them. When, whenever you're going to find one of those dark corners... Someone had to put that content right. out there. Think about that for a second now. Oh, and, yes. and, and by the way, I am grateful for those people. <laughs> I really am. That's most of my target audience right there. So. I, uh, you know, I think of the, the amount of time it takes me to do what we do here, you know, as far as content goes. And then when you see stuff like that, you think someone had the free time and took the time to put something that disgusting <laughs> Up on the internet. I mean, it, it, oh, it's a lot of work. Oh, it very much is a lot of work. <laughs> um, you know, I was just working with my co-host Chuckles the Clown on you know some promotional material. You know, I was doing a little bit of graphics. It t 
takes, yes, I mean, 